If you have your Bible, Sandy, go with me, turn to Genesis chapter 1. I'm uh, going to do my best to kind of stay with, within the theme uh, of this month, God the Creator, the creation. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, we'll begin reading in verse 26, New King James Version. Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Verse 29. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Verse 31, then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Verse 31 there again, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. Everything that God does is good. It's for the good of us. And when God created man, he also created man to have a choice. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you will dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Man has the power to resist being obedient to God or surrendering to do the will of God. We see examples of this in Mark chapter, chapter 16 and also in Thessalonians chapter 1. This means that he, is a, he has the, a free moral agent who can abuse or properly use his power of choice. But when man makes choices, good or bad, we also have a responsibility for those choices. We have a responsibility for those actions. We're not robots, nor are we totally motivated by our needs, our wants, our circumstances, etc. Regardless of what causes man to engage in bad behavior, we are still responsible for that behavior. The fact that God commands all men to repent because he will judge his actions someday show clearly that man is responsible for all he does. Everything we do, every action, every choice, we're responsible. We see examples of this in Acts 17 and also 2 Peter 3. Man needs to accept his responsibility and to try not to excuse his decisions and actions. He needs to use his intellect, his sensibility, and also his will to determine the right course of action for his life. I think these are good words that we can all implement in our life. I think these are all words that we probably all try to adhere to. But as we just talked about, we all have decisions to make, good or bad. And we will suffer the consequences of those bad actions. Tonight, if you've not made that good choice to obey the gospel of Christ, I implore to you to do that. Because the, the choice of not doing that will result in separation from God from eternity. If that's something you need to accomplish tonight, we're here to help you. Won't you come as we stand and sing? Amen.